And that's yeah. completely okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, don't let anyone tell you what wine you should enjoy. Enjoy your own wine. Enjoy your own wine. Enjoy however you, you want like to enjoy it, it as box. well. You like enjoy it out of a box. It's delicious and the right temperature. It's some good wine out of a box. <laughs> We're trying five different wines at five different prices, which we have absolutely no idea what they look like, what they taste like, and we're gonna try figure out what they are, how much they cost, and most importantly, how delicious they are. This is week four, uh, the wine discovery journey that I've been on that's not gone too far as of yet. Looks like we've got a little bit more of an amber palette this week, so we'll start out with wine number one. We have a really interesting red wine that actually looks like it's seen a little bit of age. This smells like, uh, it's not a term that I necessarily want to become synonymous with, but you add wine again. Um, it smells like margarine. It literally smells like meadowly, and I'm not about it. There is like a, there's a bit of a, what we call a VA thing or volatile acidity. There's um, a little bit of black olive tapenade thing going on, a little bit acetic, so. Um, I'm instantly drawn to $35 a bottle for that one. I'm instantly drawn to it. We're gonna pencil that in. Um, look, it's pretty tasty. I can't say I'm wrapped on it. I hate the, the flavor of yolk. That's just a personal preference. I've gotta be honest with you. Um, this is a one glass up. It's pretty deep, it's pretty rich. I'm not overly thrilled by this, but yeah, I'm gonna stick with the glass and I hope I'm not paying more than 30 bucks for this. That's 70 bucks yeah. for real. Look, this isn't looking the best, uh, I've got to be honest. Um, it's a shame, it's a shame because I think it had all the bones and structure of uh, an incredible wine and it's not shaming the winemaker. Perhaps this is a legitimate style. There are many styles of wine like this where, where this would be the acceptable standard. Um, it's just today, she's not looking too, not looking the best it could look. I'm a big orange wine guy. We've got a couple up at, uh, Unico, we've got the Terracotta and the Esoterico, which I'd love to tell you about, but the tasting notes only came out pretty recently and I haven't got them all in my head yet. Oh, spicy too. It's a white pepper, lifted. It's not what I would call like highly aromatic. It's not like part of like the musket uh, family or anything. Uh, and this is, this is old world. It's got, uh, it's pretty bretty, but that generally indicates uh, a strain of yeast that's in here that I really love the smell of. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, super easy to drink. A little bit colder would be better, but at the same time, that's not on anyone except ourselves for not having these wines stored in the fridge before we taste them. Um, yeah, and this is definitely a hands-off natural producer from probably probably France. And I really like the smell of it. It's got this kind of cool, like, orange rindy thing that's really fun. Bit of Fanta. Bit of Fanta vibes. Sun-kissed. Man, racing, grippy acidity. This is a thrilling wine. This is a real thrilling wine to, to, to encounter. And yeah, that citrusy mandarin thing is just like cutting all the way through. It's so tasty. I'd be happy to pay 50 bucks for this and I'd probably grab three bottles. $35, uh, yeah, 35 bucks, 35 bones. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at six bottles. I'm gonna leave it at six bottles of that. I think it's a really good deal. Uh, at 35 bucks, this is something that I would definitely be um, very happy to, to launch some coin out and get a couple of bottles in the, uh, in the cellar and a couple in the fridge. Alright, cool. Wine number four. Nice little crystal clear white wine. This smells like I'm going to hate it. Oh my god, this smells like my mum's fucking white wine. It's um it's incredibly delicate uh, in colour, very brilliant, uh, you know, pale straw. This feels like Riesling. Uh, nothing too overly complex, just really tasty. Um, that oh, it's, it's got that awesome like puckering level of acidity. Look, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'll, I'll pay 15 bucks for that. And like, it, what this would be for me is a really, 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 really good, really cheap wine. Like, if I bought a cask of Fruity Lexia and it tasted like that, I'd be like, well, well done spending $12 on that. That's fantastic. Like, really well done. So I'm gonna put this down as 11.80. Very, very fun little wine. Uh, and I'd happily part, you know, 35 bucks uh, a bottle for this. 45 bucks. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, six bottles, I reckon it's pretty good at this. 
Um, this will probably age really well as well. So yeah, definitely something to, to cop, not drop. This is really, really good. Moving onwards and upwards, I'm liking the look of this. That color is fantastic. Oh, this could be a lot of things. Okay. Uh, I was a little bit worried about this one when I first smelled it. I thought it was gonna be a little bit too um, traditional, your dad's wine. I need to stop saying your dad's wine. It's not gonna be a thing of this whole series. Very, very cool. Like, I'm in Nebbiolo territory already. Now, I reckon that's Nebbiolo. Or some kind of Piemonte variety. I reckon this could be Nebbiolo or Barbera. Yeah, Amaro, bitter herb, aromatics, a bit of garig. It's, it's kind of lifted. All right, for this one, I'm going $35 a bottle again. Oh, something like this would generally run you about for between $35 and $80. Um, but I, I, I'd be happy to pay $40 bucks of this, and I'd probably have happy to have three bottles. $40? Bucks? Yeah, yeah. Totally worth it. Like, this is, this is pretty appropriately priced. Right, last one, let's go. What have we got here? Color's amazing. Not really leaning me one way or the other. And man, if that doesn't smell like prime time Pinot Noir, then you know what, I don't, I don't know what is. That's a, uh, that is, that is classic Pinot. I guess this is a Pinot Noir that means some serious business. This is not some kind of swaffer light number. This is something that to be really is, uh, focused on. Man, this is serious. That is a serious Pinot. It's definitely New World. It's definitely Australia. It's got a bit of heat to it, so. Whatever they put in there, like, it's like Lynx Africa to teenage girls. Like, this is wonderful. But when you taste it, it's a bit like the boy wearing Lynx Africa to teenage girls. That's the problem for me. Yeah, this is, this is some proper good gear. This is like, some mean serious business, yeah, Pinot. But where this made this is, has probably had a lot of experience making Pinot before, I'm gonna hazard a guess at. Um, I'm 12 bottles on this too. Uh, I would be happy to pay anywhere between 50 and 60 bucks for this. You know what? I think this might be a little bit more expensive. I'm gonna go 60 bucks. I reckon this might be a $60 bottle of wine. 65? Yeah, cool. Like, if I could if I could increase that order, I would. I'd be very happy getting a dozen and recommending a dozen uh, for 65 bucks. Uh, let's see where the rest of the crew have gotten. But first, I think we need some wines and we need some people. All right, and this is why we have Henry and Noah here. Of course, you guys uh, have just tasted through these wines. Uh, first up, we're gonna get straight into it. Wine number one for us was uh, this particular little number, wine number five, so the, the wine, wine that we were most impressed with. Um, and I was hoping for a clean, we've not had a clean run of like dozen, dozen, dozen uh, yet, but uh, 26 that's, bottles, yeah, that's I thought wine. Tazzy Pino. Now you had a stab at producer and I thought it was Stefano Lubiana. I uh, know Marco, I thought Marco it was Marco Lubiana. Lubiana's. Uh, the son of Stefano. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, Josh Cooper, Macedon Rangers. Macedon Rangers, okay, all right. Do you want my input or are you just gonna get the bottle yeah. out? Oh, no, what, do you no, got, no, no. what do you want? Give a fuck. <laughs> oh no oh my fucking God! <laughs> this is incredible. This is an incredible wine. What the react. fuck? This is incredible. These guys are literally around the corner from our house. These are fantastic. So, I, um, I was not expecting that. That's mental. Holy shit, Batman. Well done. I wasn't expecting it either. Pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Moving onwards and upwards, we're at this orange wine little number, which I have I'm no idea what it is. It, it gives me Cos vibes. It gives me, it gives um, me Italian I'm, I'm, vibes. I'm thinking like some scum skinsy Alsace number. It's not uh, the hey. hey! Now we're talking. Yalma. James Erskine yep. himself, one of the OG uh, Natty winemakers from the Adelaide Hills, part of the original crew that uh, basically put us on the map. Um, super cool wine. Ripper. You can't say that Yalma doesn't sound a little bit Scandinavian though, so I wasn't in it does. incredibly it, wrong. It's, it's, it's really cool. I love this. Uh, the wine is literally called Why Try So Hard. That's it's, not bad. It's literally built for you. I do. <laughs> I do love not trying very hard. Um, the third uh, wine that we loved the most in this lineup was wine number four. Yeah. Uh, Lockie, what do we got? What do we got? This, we thought like Hills that. Neb, New World Nebbiolo. 
What do we got? Wait, Adelina. Uh, Adelina, is it there? Yeah, uh, Adelaide Hills Nebbiolo. This is their Nebbi. Great we stuff. picked it up. Great um, stuff. Cool, cracking example of a wine. Have you tried much Adelaide Hills Nebbiolo before? No, I haven't. Shock. You know we make Adelaide Hills Nebbiolo. Yeah, I've tried heaps of yours, mate. Don't like <laughs> it all the time. <laughs> That's all I'm going on about. Should, my friends are sick of me talking about Unico Zella Nebbiolo. It's ridiculous. <laughs> They're so over it. Uh, we're at wine number four, uh, wine number three, sorry, which was our fourth in the lineup, yeah. uh, which we both thought actually looked pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we committed to six bottles, you've committed to a glass. Mm. What do we got, Lockie? What do we got? Oh, Semion-ish. Semion on this one. It's a little bit weird. Ooh, what do we got? Rebola. Where is this from? It, is it Greek? So I was, the, was I the only one who didn't like this one? Yeah. Oh, shit. It, no, the variety is Rebola. The variety is Rebola. Um, Never had it before. Very thankful I have. Um, what was wine number one, Lockie? What uh, what what are we uh, nitpicking over? This was seventy bucks oh, a bottle. Oh no! Oh no! This is actually a wine maker that we um, usually enjoy a lot of the wines. Uh, well, that's why uh, I said nearby. this producer. I guess this producer for wine number one. For wine number one. What was? I oh, know that. that was of, yeah, I thought the Pike and Joyce Pinot was made by this guy. Yeah, Josh Cooper. Um, this guy's known for making some absolute incredible wines. Uh, probably some of the nicest uh, Chardonnay, tasty Chardonnay in the country. Yeah, um, some of the well, tastiest yeah. Pinot Noirs. This is a Syrah, um, and it's in you know. I, I took a random stab, 14% alcohol, 2018, very hot vintage, and it's looking like you know a pretty warm vintage here. Um, definitely big love to you, Josh. Um, just the wines um, uh, today just weren't looking uh, as sharp as I've seen them look before. Yeah, I've, um, I've had this wine in different vintages and it's been fantastic. Stockingly good. Must have just been yeah, rough, rough guts. But this is the plagues of tasting wine blind. It's the reason why you watch the show. Uh, we we just judge the wines in the glass as they seem fit. Uh, our opinions aren't necessarily worth anything at all. We just hope we're mildly entertaining. Um, I know Noah's immensely more entertaining and Henry's not. Um, but uh, we try our best. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> uh, guys, thank you so much for chiming in and we'll see you in a week.